Hi, I'm Router Bob. Welcome to Shop Saber Minutes. You know, it's real common for a new CNC owner to have some questions about feeds and speeds. You know, how fast do you cut materials? I wanted to take a little opportunity now with this Shop Saber Minute to uh, explain some concepts about how we actually determine it. What you see on the screen is called a chip load chart. And that's really where you begin to explore feeds and speeds. Now, what does that mean? Well, the concept of chip load is really chip thickness. So what we're really saying is how, at a certain feed and speed and a certain material, how, how thick is the chip going to be? And, and what's our target? What are we looking for? So the first place I start out is I look at this chart. By the way, this came from our friends over at Vortex Tool. And it lists different materials and different size tools. So let's say that we're going to make cabinet parts because that's a pretty good place to start. I'm going to use a 3 h tool. It's going to be plywood. And so I'm looking for a chip thickness of somewhere between 17 and 20 thousandths. So 17, 18, 19. Now, so that's what I'm looking for to start with. All right, well, what is that? Okay. That means that as that cutter passes through the material, the chip that's formed by each cutter or each cutting edge has a thickness within that range. Now, here's why that's important. That's important because that chip takes the heat off the cutting edge. So that makes your tools last longer. And typically when you see these charts like this, it's based on tool life. Now that may not be how you end up selecting it because there's a trade-off on tool life and sanding. You know, and also if, if you're cutting a poster plywood material, then that's a lot different than something that you're going to have to sand and put a clear finish on. So you have to make some judgments yourself on, on what, what's acceptable. But this is a great place to start. Okay, now we understand what chip load means and what chip thickness is and, and what it really determines that. Now, let's go to the next level here. How do we use that bit of information then to actually figure out what the correct feed and speed is? And, and basically what you see on the screen here is part of the tooling library from Fusion 360. And I selected it because it has a feed and speed calculator that really makes it easy to understand these concepts. So the first thing I've selected is a tool and it's a straight router bit and the diameter is 3 8 and it has two flutes so that pretty much represents what I might cut plywood with. All right? Now let's go to this tab that says feed and speed and you see at the top there are actually four values here. Well we know what spindle speed is that's how fast we're spinning the tool. Now surface feed is related directly to that number and the tool diameter. It really has to do with the speed that the cutting edge is going through the material. So if I have a specific RPM, the larger the tool I use, the faster the cutting edge is going through there. All right, it's just another way of, of really expressing RPM. Now, the second thing that we can program in is actually the feed rate. So here you have feed rate, and what's also related to that are, is the feed per tooth, or what we call chip thickness or chip load. So let's plug, it, plug in our target chip load, 0.018. And it tells us if I want to spin a spindle at 18,000 and I want to cut, to leave a chip of 18,000 thick, I need to feed at 648. So I, on my machine control in the program, I would put 18,000 RPMs, 648 inches a minute, and that achieves that, that feed per tooth. Okay? But let's say somebody tells me, you know, you really ought to cut that material at 600. All right, let's change that. Let's put in 600. And you see how that changes the chip thickness, so it recalculates it for us. Okay, so that's basically the relationship. So the first thing you do is you start out, you try to identify what the ideal chip load is for the cutter you're using and the material you're cutting. That's where you start. Then you use the calculations to figure out what that feed rate is. Okay, now that's fine until you say, I don't have enough horsepower to go 600 inches a minute. I got a small machine. All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to try to protect that chip thickness. So what I'm probably going to do is go back and do a different cutter. So let's go back and take the same cutter with a single flute and go check those numbers. And now, all of a sudden, let's go back to our chip thickness that we targeted, 18,000. Whoops. 018. Tells me to feed at 324 inches a minute. So you see, reducing the number of flutes lets you feed uh, slower and still maintain the correct chip thickness. All right. 
Now, so that, that's basically what you look at here. Now, there's a couple of variables here. One is, typically, if you want to sand less, you spin the spindle higher. So, so if maybe if I don't like to sand, I go to 21,000. Now, remember that the heat is our enemy. So the idea of, of the chip actually is the heat sink in the process. So when we form that chip with a cutting edge, that draws the heat away from the tip of the tool. And if you keep the heat away, the cutter stays sharper longer. That's why those chip thickness tables are all based on tool life. Well, that's okay, but you kind of have to make your own personal decision. I don't like to sand. So if I burn tools up a little quicker and don't have to sand, maybe that's a, a pretty good choice. So that's a consideration you have to make. And remember, Woods very has a lot of variability, even within the same tree. So sometimes you have to play with these feed rates. These are actually suggestions, really. And you kind of, in a particular material or, or environment, you have to kind of play with that a little bit. But that gives you the, the concept of this is where you start. Now let's talk about something else. All right, we already talked about uh, my machine doesn't have enough power. What if my spindle doesn't have enough power? All right. The power requirement for a cut is based on the cross-section of the cut, the, the, the basically density of the material, and the feed rate. And of course, sharpness of tool affects that also. All right, so that's what determines how much horsepower is required. So what you typically do if you can't make the full depth cut that you need, do it in passes. Now the rule of thumb for woodworking is the maximum depth per pass for a tool is two times its diameter. So a 3 h tool, I can cut three quarters material. You know, a quarter inch tool, I can cut half inch material. Okay, so what if you run out of horsepower? Maybe your machine doesn't have a large spindle. Well, what you do is to maintain that chip load that you want, you just use multiple passes where you're not taking off enough material to overload your spindle. Then what you might want to do then is when you make those multiple passes, leave a little bit of allowance on the edge and then take that off with a final pass, and then that'll give you a really nice edge finish. So that's how you deal with all this. You know, uh, feeds and speeds are a gray area, but hopefully I gave you enough information to at least get started. I hope you enjoyed this Shop Saver Minute.